الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهده ونستغفره واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده والنبي والرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم beginning praising Allah and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanallah for so many blessings we cannot count them the blessing alhamdulillah of the Quran as a guidance and as a mercy thanking Allah for the mercy and the blessing of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and thanking Allah for having provided us with signs that would invite us, alhamdulillah, to follow that example that Allah might make us successful in this life and in the hereafter. Today, in the khutbah till Jumu'ah, I want to have you think subhanallah about three things three things the first thing walhamdulillah is for you and I to have a radical commitment to the power of Allah a radical commitment to the power of Allah I know walhamdulillah that we say it ashhadu an la ilaha illallah we say walhamdulillah that there's nothing worthy of worship except God and God alone nothing that's what we say but when one has a radical relationship with Allah radical meaning fundamental that your base relationship is empowered by your relationship with the Lord, the Rabbul Alameen, the creator, sustainer of everything. One, to operate and to act and to function in that relationship. One. The second, walhamdulillah, knowing that Allah is in control of every single thing that happens that you would be willing to tell people about your relationship with Allah. You see, when we talk about Kalima Shahada, we talk about saying that I believe La ilaha illallah. And saying Muhammad Rasulullah that Muhammad is Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Prophet of Allah. And then in that relationship to know in your own personal life the third that with the help of Allah anything is possible. That in your relationship with Allah, anything is possible. Let me tell you why. When you have this kind of relationship, you are not afraid of anything. If you have this kind of relationship, you're not afraid of anybody. If you have this kind of relationship, and you share with other people that you know that Allah is Rabbul Alameen, you know that Allah is in charge and in control of everything, and I'm not afraid to say to anybody, anywhere, I'm a Muslim. It changes everything. SubhanAllah, I'm going to share with you just something from the seerah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam just to maybe make this example a little clearer for us. Because it is in that 
sharing and proclaiming that these realities are possible, you will begin then to care for other people. See, when you feel you're deficient, when you feel that you're under attack, just watch television for like five minutes. When you start feeling that these powers are more than the power of Allah, then you start being insecure. They say sometimes the best defense is offense. Let me take you back to a time with the Prophet Wasallam. It was the period, and we ask Allah's peace and blessings on him, alayhi salam, and his family and his companions. And all of the anbiya, those who follow the way of Allah's haq until the day of judgment, ameen. This example in the part of the life of Rasulullah sallallahu amazing. They are living in Mecca in this riwayah. They're living in Mecca. This is the year I talk about it regularly because it, 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 I feel it. The year of sorrows. It's like worse than the time we're living in now. It's like it. Where you're living as a minority in the majority society. And they know that Muhammad Sallallahu that he is al -Amin. He's upright. He's the most honest, trustworthy, loyal. They know it. They push him to the outskirts of of the society social boycott don't do business with the Muslims don't marry the Muslims don't rent your apartment to the Muslims year of sorrows the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he had the benefit of the protection of his uncle Abu Talib so even though he was under siege, he had protection, but his followers, they, some of them, they were weak. They didn't have the protection. That year he died. No protection. Then, alhamdulillah, Khadija bin Khuwailid, his wife, who he said she believed in me when nobody believed in me, Allah took her. May Allah have mercy on her. She financed the Islamic movement when nobody financed it. Allah call her back. Muslims are under hard times. I wish I had, we had more time, but we don't have more time. But it was a very, 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 very difficult time to be Muslim. And in this narration, alhamdulillah, the Prophet salam, comes to one of the Sahabiat, uh, uh, Um Muhani, and he says, Let me tell you what happened to me last night. What happened to me? What happened last night? Let me tell you what happened. She advised the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, don't tell anybody. What you're telling me, don't tell anybody about this. Because people already are skeptical about Muslims. Now, what you just told me, if you tell them, they're really not going to believe in Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he has yaqeen. He goes to the leaders of Mecca and he says, let me tell you what happened last night. I was praying Isha and Masjid al-Haram and I prayed Salat al-Fajr. Isha and Fajr. I stayed in the Masjid all night. I didn't leave. Except that I had an amazing journey. And Allah described this amazing journey. 
Surah Al-Isra saying that exalted is Allah who took his servant by night, his abd by night, the one who is relying completely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, took him by night from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa in a night. And we blessed and we showed him our signs, our ayat, and indeed, Allah is all hearing and all seeing. So he told the Quraysh this. They said, man, you know what? We really have some doubts about Muslims now. This is why they said, oh, he must be majnoon. Crazy. I have news for you. Some of your co-workers, your friends, when you start telling them about Islam, they tell them, they tell you, you're crazy. You don't believe me? Tell them, okay, we're now in the month of Rajab. Then we're going to have the month of Shaban. And we're going to start fasting like crazy. And then when we get to Ramadan, we're going to fast all month from dawn until sunset. Probably going to be, some days going to be 95 degrees. They said, no food, no water, nothing? Yeah. They said, man, y'all crazy. They said, yeah, but wait. The Prophet Wasallam testifies to them about what Allah informed him about and informs us about in the Quran. That Allah took him in a night. Some riwayah say the time that it took for a door to swing open and closed, he came and went. Even today, some of us, we have children. You say to your child, Oh, you know, the 27th of Rajab, this is uh, when the Prophet, السلام, according to some uh, 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 writings, this was the night. They said, that's impossible. You expect me to believe that? I said, yeah, that's the same thing the Quran said. They said, it's impossible. In those days, subhanAllah, it took 30 days to travel from Mecca to Jerusalem one way. And in 30 days to come back. You say, he made that journey? In one night? No way. The Prophet ﷺ relied on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if Allah revealed this to him, and he makes this journey, and Bukhari, just, just for the record, Bukhari, he says that this wasn't a journey that was like a dream. He said, Bukhari said, it was, he was uh, in his uh, physicality. He said, man, you really want to know. Prophet Sallallahu he relied on Allah. He told the people, this is what happened to me. Now, there is a scholar, his name is Khalid Abu Fadl. He's a young scholar. He said, I know that many times people are reading things about Islam, the Quran, and they don't understand them. He said, take a conscious pause. You don't have enough knowledge to say, I don't believe in that because it's in the Quran. Maybe in the hadith, I could have my opinion about whether this hadith is, is you know, authentic or not. But the Quran, I can't take any argument with the Quran. If the Quran says that Allah took his servant by night, I believe it. He said, but if you have something that it doesn't make sense to you right now, don't make a judgment. Say Allah said it and I believe it. And later Allah will explain maybe to me in this life or later what that really meant. Because subhanAllah, Aksan al-Hadith, Kitab Allah. Whether it makes sense to you or not, doesn't matter. If Allah said it, it's true. 
And maybe you don't understand it now. You just say, I don't understand it now. I'm just going to accept it. Subhanallah. This young scholar, he says, take a conscious pause. Because you don't want to get yourself in the state where you say, Allah said something, I don't believe in it. Just say, okay, I don't understand it. Just put it in your pocket and keep going. He calls it conscious pause. That in that acceptance, in that belief in knowledge which is beyond your capacity, now you're moving into the state of Islam. Where the Quran informs us, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَرَّعِبَ فِيهِ هُدَى لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِمَّا رَزَّقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِكُونَ I'm not fundraising today. No. There is a characteristic of this ummah. That we believe in the book and we believe in al-ghaib. Allah informs us about it. And walhamdulillah, the Prophet وسلم, he shared it with the people that he was with. It will be centuries later before people will say of science and technology, the Quran thought it was impossible. But now with physics and other things we say, hmm, the Quran said something to us. We thought it was amazing, but it's possible by Allah. Allah took his servant by night on an amazing journey. Not only from the Quran describes from Mecca to Jerusalem, but also to the seventh heavens. I just want to share with you just some science for a few minutes. When we talk about the heavens, and there are seven heavens, the first heaven is all of outer space. This is the first heaven. Many of you know, maybe this rewire, they, they said it is like throwing a ring into the desert. That's, this, this heaven is like the ring thrown into the desert. And the next heaven is like throwing another ring into another desert. You know where we are now. I mean, believe me, scientists then, they, they, people couldn't even imagine how vast space is. If you can imagine living in a time when people did not know the speed of light. But now we know the speed of light we know that it takes approximately 10 minutes for light to travel from the sun to the earth. I can consult with uh, Skype right now. I mean, uh, the, whoever shake Google. But plus or minus, takes about 10 minutes light to come from the sun to the earth. So if Muhammad وسلم, was traveling at the speed of light, people would have noticed that he had left Masjid al-Haram and came back. Malaika are made of light. I can understand they travel at the speed of light. I could understand that. But you can't travel physically at the speed of light, you disintegrate. So I always used to wonder, you know, I would be, 
uh, reading this and sharing this with, with young people, and they would say, well, Sheikh, nothing can travel in the physical universe faster than the speed of light. So how can you tell me that the Prophet ﷺ made this journey from these distances in his physicality? And I told him, I said, I, I just believe in it. Allah said, I believe in it. That's it. Then my daughter told me, she said, uh, Dad, did you ever watch the movie Interstellar? I said, yeah. She, and she's a skeptic, you know. Interstellar. I said, SubhanAllah. What used to be our science fiction, that space has places where it folds, and one can go in one part of the universe and come out in seconds in the other side of the universe and return like that. I said, now, I'm not going to say Allah is talking about wormhole. For all you interstellar PLC brother, he's like, yeah. right? I'm not going to say that. But now the astrophysicist today is saying, guess what? We don't know how to do it. But we know from our theories that it's possible. I said, subhanAllah, maybe I was a skeptic. Now I see 14 centuries after the Quran, the scientist is catching up with some physics that Allah created at the time before the Big Bang. Kun fire kun. I say that to you just to say for us, Quran is not a book of science, it's not a book of history. I'm not trying to make that point, but what I am saying is that things that people used to say were impossible and Allah said it was possible, now the scientist is finally saying, guess what? Aqsan al-Hadith, Kitab Allah. Human beings' discovery of science and technology is evolving and the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is complete. Those three things. When the Prophet ﷺ returns from his journey, the Quraysh say, okay, if you say you made this amazing journey, and the Prophet had never been to Jerusalem, he, they said, describe it to us. Hmm? Describe it. He never, he never took a caravan. We know far, he, went, he was on the way to Syria, and he turned back. This is in his Syria as a child. He doesn't know nothing about what Jerusalem looks like. They challenged the Prophet Wasallam's truthfulness, and Allah revealed before him what is the physical layout of Jerusalem. He can describe all of the elements. For people who know, they say, wow, yeah, he, he knows what he's talking about. When you stand up for Allah and the truth, Allah will send you resources to help you. I'm telling you, if you stand up for what you know to be the truth, Allah will bring you resources to help you. You cannot imagine them. Now guess what? When the Prophet ﷺ said to them what the Quran said, what Allah did for him, he had no idea that Allah would provide for him additional information. He's stepping out because of his connection, relationship, reliance on Allah. I'm saying to you, when it happens to you and it happens to all of us, say, Hasbunallah wa na'am wakil, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Because Allah can bring it out 
But Allah is testing you to find out, will you stand for what is right or are you going to hide? Wallahi, one day, I don't want to get distracted. One day, I was called to do an interview with Sean Hannity. Now, many people, I don't know about you, many people would say Sean Hannity is a racist. Sean Hannity is a bigot. Sean Hannity is definitely anti. He's a Muslim hater. Just to make sure they watch it on the internet, you know. They put that quote, Imam said. I interviewed with Sean Hannity for 30 minutes. Imam, what about Islam? What about this? What about that? I answered him. He said, well, I don't hear Muslims saying that. I said, well, Sean, you mean if a tree falls in the forest and you don't report on it, it doesn't make a sound? The producer started laughing. You know what? Sean Hannity never put it that episode on, on television. Uh, Allah can just, you, you know, like, I mean, th that clearly says that Sean Hannity was afraid to put the truth on television. Hmm? And then complain that we never say those things denouncing terrorism, whatever, and then when I say it on his show, then he doesn't broadcast it, which proves why you don't see more of it on, on television because they censor the truth, some of them. So the first, no matter what happens, know that Allah is your helper. The second, The Prophet ﷺ, he could have taken the advice of his cousin and say, you know what, man, I'm not going to tell anybody about what Allah did for me last night because maybe it's too heavy for them. Go out and tell people about how Allah is working in your life. Hmm? Tell them. And the last, I want you to think about the Prophet ﷺ for just a minute. Because his priority, even in this difficulty, Allah gave him the assurance in the mirage that Allah is with him. That Allah is with him. Now once you identify that Allah is with you, then you can start to do things for other people. But when you think that you're alone, then you start feeling that you have to look out for yourself. Every day in Salah, we rehearse a dialogue between Allah and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that gives us the example of how we would function if we really believed fully in Allah and if we were willing to stand up for the truth, then something amazing can happen. You're sitting in Julus and you're rehearsing this communication between Allah and the Prophet ﷺ that comes from this mirage. Indirectly, I want to make sure I'm clear. This is an indirect communication between Allah and the Prophet ﷺ. And when your finger is moving, you are repeating this conversation. Atayyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibatu. Allah is informing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this very, very difficult time that Allah is with you. Muhammad, Allah is with you. Now I'm, I'm very sure about this. I'm very sure that if you or I were 
in this Isra wa Miraj, we would not say what the Prophet said, probably. If you were there and Allah says to you, I got you. You're, 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 you're blessed by me. Whatever problems you have, I'm going to take care of everything for you. What you want. Man, I know what I would say. I would say, oh Allah, when I was born, my father was already dead. I was born an orphan. Allah, if, if we got it like that, bring me my father. I never met him. Abdullah, bring him. Somebody else might say, well, yeah, Allah. My mother died. I was six years old. If I'm, if I'm your prophet, you, you made miracles for the other prophets. Give me my mother back. Every child, they want their mother. The prophet, salam, he could have said, Yeah, Allah, raise Khadija bin Khawalid from the dead. Didn't you do something for Isa ibn Maryam? Do it for me. And that'll show the Quraysh that I'm your Nabi, Rasulullah. Show him. He could have said, Ya Allah, what about Khadija bin Khawalid? I'm in Abdullah. It's my family. He could have asked for anything. Once he's clear about his relationship with Allah, and you will see this throughout the life of Rasulullah coming from a taif. If Allah is pleased with him, he doesn't want nothing. If Allah is assuring the Prophet salam, that everything that you're doing, Muhammad salam, is what I want you to do, I don't care what happened to the rest of it. I don't care they discriminate against me. I don't care if I don't get no job. I don't care if they stop me at the airport. I don't care what they do. As long as Allah is satisfied with what I'm doing, I don't care. Care about people? Say no popularity contest with anybody except Allah. I'm telling you, you have that attitude, subhanAllah. Allah make things happen for you. The Prophet وسلم, replies, Assalamu alayna ibdilahi salihin. Oh Allah, put your blessing on my ummah. No, if, 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 if it's all good with me, put it on my ummah. Put your blessings on them. We repeat this over and over and over. I'm challenging you today, bi'ithnillah, that if you say it, then believe that Allah put his blessings on the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then act like it. Share that message with someone else. Lose the fear of anything except Allah. And know, walhamdulillah, that Allah can change your affair. The Prophet of Islam took a chance. And Allah backed him up. Brothers and sisters, I'm challenging you today. I know that scholars differ whether it's the 27th of Rajab, which is next Wednesday, or not. It's not my issue. Whether that's actually the night or not, it's not the issue. People start worshiping the night, that's not what we're talking about. But I know what Allah said that he gave to his messenger, Rasul Sallallahu that it would be a sign for us to strengthen our conviction. And alhamdulillah, I pray to Allah that maybe today you might feel stronger to go out and share with people the miracle of Islam. 
if we do bi'ithnillah, Allah can change our condition. You know, you think about, I think about people like Sean Hannity. I say, you know, Umar ibn Khattab, he was on his way to kill the Prophet And once Islam penetrated his heart from the Quran, he said, take me to Muhammad. They said, no. They said, no, I don't want to kill him. I want to become his follower. Maybe Sean Hannity, you don't know. I know you write him off. You see what I'm saying? And other people. I don't know, Donald Trump, whoever. Maybe Donald Trump, one day he comes into the message, you'd be like, not in here. I remember Khalid bin Walid. Said, yeah, he came. I said, I came. I want to become the raised sword of Islam. All right? Can you, you, you don't think it's possible. I know. See, that's, your, that's our problem. But if you make da'wah to these people, wallahi, can you, imagine, can you imagine bringing these people to the haqq of Allah? How strong they would be. They wouldn't be like us. If we had the courage, alhamdulillah, to share the message of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah with them. Allahumma dina fi man hadayt, wa fina fi man afayt, wa tawalana fi man tawalayt. O oh Allah, guide us among those whom you have guided. Protect us among those whom you have protected. Ya Allah, take us, alhamdulillah, as a friend like you took uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, alhamdulillah, to guide our feet and our connection and our relationship, alhamdulillah, that we might walk on a sirat al-mustaqeem. Oh Allah, we ask for your mercy and your peace, alhamdulillah, on those who are suffering, Ya Allah, in our community, in our neighborhood, in our world, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, we ask, alhamdulillah, that you help us to become emissaries of your peace, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, help us, alhamdulillah, to establish justice. Oh Allah, we ask, alhamdulillah, any difficulties that we have, Ya Allah, that you remove them, bi'idnillah, because of our trust and our faith and our belief in you, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, we ask, alhamdulillah, your mercy on our children, Ya Allah through the difficult kalam of negative speech, Ya Allah, that they would become, alhamdulillah, advocates and emissaries and speakers up for Islam, Ya Allah, rather than hiding in fear, alhamdulillah, of anything except you. Oh Allah, we ask, alhamdulillah, for your mercy and your peace on the Prophet, alayhi salatu was salam, and on his family and on his companions, and all of the anbiya, Ya Allah, and those who follow the way of your haqq until the day of judgment. Ameen.